Hello and welcome to the Neo News Today podcast. This is your host, Dylan, speaking with you. On episode 20 of the Neo News Today pod, we have a chance to sit down and speak with the CEO of SafePal, Veronica Wong. SafePal is a hardware wallet provider that recently released its first product, the S1 Wallet. Additionally, the team has partnered with Neo Global Development to assist in integrating support for Neo, Gas, and NEP5 tokens. In this conversation, we have a chance to discuss the mission and goals of SafePal. We also discuss the experience of the SafePal team members and how that experience has allowed them to craft a safe and affordable product. We delve a little bit more into the process for adding support for new coins, as well as planned support for a fiat on and off ramp portal. We shift into discussing the use of QR codes instead of USB connectivity, like with other hardware wallets, as well as the security mechanisms of the S1 wallet and how they may detect those malicious users. We finish the conversation with discussing the relationship between Neo and SafePal, as well as Veronica's perspective on the differences between working on the Neo public blockchain versus other public blockchains. So I hope you enjoy listening to this conversation as much as I enjoyed having it. Hey guys, what's going on? This is the host of the Neo News Today podcast, Dylan speaking with you. We have the opportunity today to speak with Veronica Wong, the CEO of SafePal. Uh, SafePal recently released its first hardware wallet called the S1, which is 100% offline, meaning it handles all interactions such as signing transactions um, through the use of QR codes and using a mobile device. And in October of 2019, SafePal integrated Neo support into its hardware wallet, uh, joining a, a large list of other cryptocurrencies. So we're really excited to have you uh, chat with us today, Veronica. How are you doing? Hi, Dylan. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, very exciting. It's the first time joining the Neo podcast. Uh, thanks for having having me here. Um, so what we what we what SafePal is uh, uh, would like to achieve is to provide the best solution of cryptocurrency custody uh, with the combination of advanced security and enjoyable user experience. So uh, I hope all of the Neo holders can enjoy the great product we provided and and let let us know uh, if you have any better suggestions anytime. So. Yeah. So as a company, how long has uh, SafePal been around and how long has the team you're working with been working with one another? Yes, uh, so the founders team and the core members uh, of SafePal have been knowing each other for nearly a decade. So we have been working in our past experience in the leading tech giants like Tencent and Huawei. And the SafePal project was launched early last year, uh, last January, and, and, and we started the industrial design and mecha mechanical design of the SafePal S1 uh, in starting in February, last February. Uh, so uh, it took us nearly half, uh, six months to seven months to finish the uh, design and production of the first prototype. And in last October, Binance invested in, in us and we became the first hardware wallet portfolio in Binance ecosystem. And, uh, and then in this May, uh, finally, uh, we launched the SafePal S1 uh, in the global market. And to this moment, uh, we have been serving users from more than 55 countries and regions and, and integrating a tons of assets into the wallet. So that is a basic uh, st uh, structure uh, or milestone that we have uh, 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 come to uh, in the in the past two years. Yeah. Very cool that you're the first hardware wallet in Binance's portfolio. So other than Neo, um, what are some of the other cryptocurrencies that the SafePal wallet supports, and what is the process for adding new support? Yes. Uh, so for now, actually, it's 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 been rapidly uh, increasing. So to this moment, uh, um, leading blockchains like uh, Neo, like uh, Binance Mainnet, BTC, Ethereum, 
and the Dash, and yeah, many more of them uh, have been supported by uh, SafePal. And actually, till now, we are integrating three to five blockchains per month, uh, onboarding more tokens on, on, on top of them uh, into the SafePal wallet. So we think that is the basic foundation we need to have uh, to onboard more users to access our service. So what does the process look like then for adding support for a new cryptocurrency? Is it community driven or do develop, do project developers reach out to SafePal to integrate? What does that look like? Yeah, normally we will look into the top or mainstream currencies uh, in, for example, coin market cap or coin gecko uh, to learn more about which currencies are the most popular ones. And second factor would be the community driven factor, meaning that we will actively collect the feedback and the uh, their favorite coins from the community. And actually, we, we have posted a survey uh, in the community collecting uh, users' favorite coins. And actually, uh, to be honest, NEO is at the top of it. Uh, so that is another reason why we try to prioritize NEO blockchain integration into our pipeline. So that is the second factor. And lastly, it would be the technical difficulty. Uh, so we, 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 whether would it take longer or easier to support, uh, we will also take into consideration because each month we will spend our efforts, like 50% of our developmental effort into the currency support. Uh, so that is a basic uh, framework of how we select or how we choose the currencies to be prioritized in uh, SayPal wallet integration. Interesting. And I noticed in the NEO AMA that you did a couple of weeks ago that you mentioned yeah. either either currently or in the very short term, um, SafePal is planning to integrate uh, some sort of fiat on-ramp and off-ramp support. Is that something that's already existing or is that on the on the timeline? Yes, it is already existing and under testing periods. So uh, for, for now, the developmental team have, have been uh, testing on this feature, and I think it should be released in the next or the coming next week. Uh, oh, we'll, cool. keep, we'll surely keep you posted. Um, so what fiat currency support does SafePal plan to integrate? Um, um uh, it, it, it enables users to purchase crypto uh, using their credit cards. It means okay. uh, you can pay in the different fiat, like US dollars, uh, Canada dollars, uh, different fiat currencies. Uh, we will uh, uh, unveil further details on it later. And, and it, as for the crypto assets uh, being available on this service, for now, there are only a few limited uh, currencies uh, such as BTC, ETH, and BNB, and, and I, I guess there are totally four or five of them. So uh, this service will also, also uh, in explore more currency assets uh, so that users can be able to buy whatever they want. Yeah, I've noticed here in the States, um, a partner often is, is Wire, and Wire only offers support for a handful of cryptocurrencies. Yes, and I think it, it, it simply takes time. Mm -hmm. So it is a matter of time. Uh, so there's no technical barrier into it. Uh, so it is mostly like when and, and where will it be integrated? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So shifting uh, gears a little bit, I want to talk a little bit more about the, the hardware and the actual wallet of the S1 because... Mm -hmm. It is more unique than any hardware wallet I've come across. Um, typically with like a treasure or a ledger, the user has to plug their device into their computer for it to work. The S1 uses a QR code and it uses a mobile phone application. So could you just describe a little bit about what that process is and why SafePal opted to use QR codes in mobile application? Yes, we actually, uh, in last January and February, when we started to design the prototype of SafePal, we have taken uh, this uh, communication mechanism into consideration, like how and uh, we would like our users to access their uh, crypto access. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, encrypted QR codes can uh, put the code wallet 100% offline because there's no 
physical connection or radio frequency connection in such way. So only by scanning, there would be two advantages. Firstly, uh, as I mentioned, uh, there is no physical or virtual connection to the wallet. Secondly, uh, when scanning the QR codes, it means it is a short distance connection, it means you have to scan it in like 10 or 15 centimeters distance. Unlike Bluetooth, Bluetooth, the uh, available distance would be like 50 meters, mm -hmm. much longer, and, and the remote attack could happen or the data inception could happen in this process. But by scanning the QR code, it is a short distance communication, uh, which would prevent such kind of long distance uh, radio frequency attack. So we favor uh, encrypted QR code communication in the first hand. And indeed, the SAPAL S1 is not like the others, like you, you might haven't seen anything like it or look familiar like it on the market because we built the wallet from scratches. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I haven't mentioned that in our team, we have hardware expertise uh, working in the hardware design for nearly a decade. We also have software developers uh, who used to work in the tech giants like Einstein and, uh, and, and Huawei. Mm -hmm. And so it is a, this kind of capacity model enables us to build a hardware wallet with the great software embedded in it from scratches. So how it works, it is very simple. So the hardware S1 device will be the custodian of your private key. Uh, inside it, there is a secure element where the private key is locked. And once everyone, anyone tries to attack, the sensors in it will detect the malicious attack and then lock down the wallet and wipe out the private key and all of the wallet data. So the hardware essentially would be responsible for two jobs. So first is to keep the private key safe. Secondly is to sign every outgoing transactions like sending money to others or building a trading orders. You sign and approve all of the outgoing assets management. So uh, on, on the SafePal app, the app is accessible to the internet. So it would be responsible of all of the is interaction between blockchains. For example, drawing all of the transaction data from Neo blockchain and updating the transaction history and status, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So the two parties communicate via encrypted QR code. So in such way, the private key is 100% offline, uh, seven, 24 hours, and the users can trans transact by the or build trade pairs or whatever they like to manage their assets anywhere they want without carrying a PC or laptop. So that is the basic scenario when a user tries to use a SafePal wallet. Yes. I think it's a very, it's a very interesting mechanism and function to have incorporated uh, an ability for the device to know if a physical, if a user is, is not the physical user and it will wipe the, um, private key clean. Now, how does the how does the hardware wallet know when a malicious user is trying to access the wallet? Yeah, there are multiple sensors embedded in it. Uh, I, I cannot disclose all of them, but I can share part of them. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, there are light sensors. Uh, when you try to brutal attack and open, crack open the device, it will surely detect it. Mm. And there are, is radio frequency uh, sensors. When you try to uh, breach over uh, with a uh, high frequency or also a uh, high voltage, uh, it will also detect it. So details like this can detect all of the malicious attempt upon the hardware wallet. And once any one of these sensors detect, detects some of such of attempts, uh, it will start uh, the self-destroy mechanism. So uh, all of these sensors are surrounding the secure element, meaning the private key, where the private key is located. So that is the basic structure of uh, SAPL S1. So uh, inside SAPL S1, there is also another processor uh, processing all of the basic logic running on the uh, SAPL uh, wallet, such as the communication or data uh, display uh, on the screen and logic like this will be uh, operated by the uh, general processor uh, that is separate from the secure element. Thank you for sharing a little bit of the secret sauce behind the security of SafePal. 
Um, it sounds like there are a lot of new factors that are integrated into the hardware wallet that are different than other hardware wallets. However, SafePal seems to be one of the more affordable wallets in the market, starting at thirty nine ninety nine. Um, how was the? How were you guys able to keep the cost low while still providing a wide variety of new types of functions? Yes, um, I, I just mentioned a little bit of our team background. Um, the core members, uh, my uh, CPO, the product uh, leader. Uh, in our team actually is a hardware expertise with uh, 15 years of hardware manufacture and production. So he is the people, the person who tries to do all of the cost control and to do all of the industrial design because there are a lot of know-hows involved in how to make a hardware wallet cheaper and but also with a very good quality. So he is the core person uh, of the hardware uh, uh, design and production. And actually, we meant to make the wallet cheaper at the very first beginning because uh, we are very firm believer of blockchain technology. We think in the long term future, uh, blockchain would be everywhere. It would be combined with uh, AI, would be combined with cloud computing. It would be grown into the one of the uh, core elements of our tech future. Uh, so we think for the sake of adoption and penetration of the industry, we need to make it cheaper. Uh, we need to make it affordable for the masses so that everyone could afford a decent, uh, secure hardware wallet to lock up their own crypto assets. And so we, from the very first beginning, we have spent a lot of effort in choosing and designing the hardware specifications. And with the technical know-how we have in our team, yes, we finally managed to do that uh, at $39 uh, um, hardware wallet. And actually some of the users challenge us <laughs> uh, saying that, wow, such a low price, possibly just cracks or possibly possibly just a rubbish. <laughs> um, actually, if you take a thing, uh, take a look at uh, Google Home Mini, if you take a look at Amazon Echo, who are only selling like 24 bucks or even lower, uh, you will find that it is only a stereotype uh, considering that cheaper uh, products, meaning lower quality, it is, it is unfair. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually the pricing strategy is also one of the unique uh, strengths we have to provide an accessible solution for the masses. Um, so that is the, uh, the, the, a little bit thoughts on our side about this uh, pricing strategy. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. So kind of um, uh, before we start closing out, I wanted to shift gears a little bit to the relationship between NEO and SafePal. In the AMA you did with NEO, you spoke very highly of the, of the project. Uh, in our conversation beforehand, you spoke highly of the project. So I'm wondering, how did the relationship begin? And what does that relationship with NEO look like for SafePal? Yeah, like in 2017, when we take, took a look into blockchain technology and to consider whether we would like to join in, we have no NEO. Uh, so NEO has been there for nearly five years. We really admire its nature and long-term vision. It is truly open, transparent, decentralized, and community-driven. So uh, after the SafePal project was launched, we have been receiving, like, like I said, tons of users' requests asking, uh, whether we can integrate with NEO. Uh, and, and, and NEO is at the top of the uh, survey collecting users' feedback about their favorite coins. So in uh, earlier this year, like I don't remember the concrete date, probably in April or May, uh, we got to know uh, NEO's core team in Shanghai and Hangzhou. And we immediately found that the two teams share very similar values and uh, communication styles. The team is very low profile, uh, strong in technical know-how, and very diligent. So soon after we we started uh, our project, like we launched the SAPA wallet, we have decided to prioritize Neo into our developmental pipeline. So later, yeah, as you you as you can see in October, we finally get Neo alive in SAPA. Uh, it took a little bit longer than we expected because NEO is very special. It, out of the many blockchain assets we have supported, 
it is the first blockchain supported automatic gas collection. I can see mm. why users love it because by holding NEO, you can generate continuous gas out of your holding asset, which will encourage you to hold more. It is a positive circulation we can see. So uh, we, we, we really admire such kind of mechanism. And we have seen that NEO has been working on more possibilities like dApps, like uh, smart contracts. So in the long run, we will surely keep posted with NEO's progresses and look forward to more exciting features issued on NEO blockchain. Very cool. Yeah, so that is, yeah, that is a, a yeah, small story between the two teams. So I, dealing with so many different cryptocurrency projects, you must work with a variety of different blockchain teams. So what are some of the differences uh, between NEO and other blockchains um, that you might not have just covered? Um, for okay, so Neo is in among one of the earliest blockchain issue in 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, on technical side, it has accumulated uh, a very strong and profound uh, strength in all of the blockchain-based uh, technology, like smart contract and DApps and all of that. And I think Neo, uh, based in China, uh, is very uh, how to say. Uh, uh, their feet are very ground uh, rooting, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that uh, they they are building a tangible solution, not just the not just the uh, fancy or uh, imagine imagining uh, features building in the cl uh, cloud or in the sky, but they are ground rooting, uh, building a very solid foundation mm -hmm. uh, in in this ecosystem. We can tell that because uh, by working with the Neo team they have been providing continuous and uh, very uh, swift response uh, to all of our technical uh, uh, difficulties or questions. And they are also providing many insights about how they see the evolution of blockchain in the future. And uh, I also personally know, know the CEO, uh, Da Hu Fei uh, of Neo Blockchain, and he is a very uh, forward thinking person. Uh, so we share a lot of uh, the same insights. For example, uh, the blockchain would not only be the custodian of your crypto assets, but also for your digital identity in the long term, when more and more personal data would be posted on chain. Mm -hmm. And it will also be the bridge uh, of uh, the long run of uh, virtual world and realistic world when we build a more realistic future uh, where everyone is even, uh, no matter if you are in entertainment industry, gaming industry, and all of the uh, other tokenization industry like uh, Homeland or real estate. So we share a lot of uh, same similar insight uh, of the long-term future of blockchain in the industry. So I think all of these factors makes uh, Neo stand out uh, among all of the other blockchains because we work with a lot of other projects, um, to be honest, uh, some of them might not be that, uh, how to say, uh, community driven, mm -hmm. or it might not be that kind of forward thinking. Probably they just rush onto the peak of the, of the a, 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 how to say, the development of the blockchain industry, but uh, totally they share different insights. Uh, there's no right or wrong in it, uh, but it is just that uh, our team echoes on uh, what Neo considered uh, the future of blockchain technology. And I think that is very good, very good and pretty cool. Yeah. Well, thank you uh, so much, Veronica, for taking some time to speak with the Neo News Today podcast. I feel like there were probably a million more questions I could have asked, but I want to be uh, respectful of your time. So is there a good way for our listeners to follow along with, with you and with SafePal? Yeah, sure. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. Uh, you can search iSafePal. You can find us there. And also you can search for SafePal Wallet on Telegram. And we'll be there anytime. Yeah, like, like I will also be there chatting with our users. So come uh, talk with us and reach out anytime uh, when you have any question of with us or with the hardware uh, wallet uh, industry, all of that. Welcome. Thank you so much for chatting with us today, Veronica. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. Bye-bye. Well, what did you think of that conversation? 
I thought it was really cool to hear that Veronica thinks so highly of the Neo blockchain project, as well as hearing that SafePal is the first hardware wallet team that Binance has invested in. To keep up to date with all the Neo ecosystem coverage, please visit www.neonewstoday.com. And you can also feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel or our iTunes account to get future podcast episodes once they've aired. So thank you so much for listening to the Neo News Today podcast, and we look forward to catching you on the next one.